Hi, it's Marion Owen in Kodiak, Alaska. And today it's time for a garden tour because it snowed last night about four or five inches and things are happening in spite of the snow. It is, oh, maybe day three of spring. So let's see what we can find and we'll learn some tips and tricks along the way and mostly just to say hi from our garden. Okay, let's go. So let's start from our driveway. We run a bed and breakfast, so that's why you see the guest parking sign there. And this is the back side of our hoop house. And you can see these beds over here. We've got them covered up with plastic. And I'll be uncovering the plastic soon and incorporating some compost and uh, maybe some shredded kelp in there and plants some nice annuals like lobelia and marigolds. And then here's the side of the hoop house. Oops! You can see that the, the snow dumped off or slid off. And it's covering up old oh, bulbs, you know, daffodils and tulips and so on. And how you like those feet? It feels great. <laughs> Big toes. Nice patterns. I like it. I might have to come out with my big camera. Oops. And we've got hands. I just kind of move these around in the garden. We'll take a quick peek in here. You might think there's not much happening, but fans are always running, irrigation hoses, key fence, and uh, some berries. So, sleeping, but very much alive. Over here, all right, the rhubarb bed. They'll be poking up soon. And that's a rain gutter. It's gonna be repurposed as uh, a, a little miniature container for lobelia and maybe some lettuce, or probably some nasturtiums too. Oh boy, so this, um, Clump of snow on the rhododendron. It'll fall off soon. It'll be fine. Snow doesn't hurt these guys. Oh, here's Daisy. She's not steaming right now, but steam from our boiler comes out. More rhododendrons covered with snow. It'll be all right. And I can see that the rose is starting to bud out, and that is pretty awesome. Believe it or not, underneath the snow are uh, um, primroses going to pop up, a piece of yard art. Now, let's enter the main part of the garden. Wind's starting to come up, so I apologize in advance for any um, extra sounds here. I pruned this cherry tree the other day. Wow. Everybody needs a sea otter and a crane in their yard, right? Give you kind of an overall view. Now these raised beds are covered most of the winter. And I do that so that the nutrients don't wash away in the winter rains. And uh, sometimes I can put other plants in there, just kind of overwinter them. I can tell the wind is coming up because I can hear squeaking in the background. I think that's uh, a cranky yard ornament. And we got planes overhead, such is life. And you can see here, these clips, these are those two inch uh, large paper clips that I use to secure uh, the plastic, this reinforced plastic on these PVC pipes. And um, I'll show you in a minute when I see how much, show you how much this, uh, this plastic really protects plants. So let's continue on here. Yeah, the hoops stay up all year. We just change the different uh, materials that we drape over it. I might put a uh, fishnet to keep the birds out, cats out. I might cover it with a uh, tool fabric, you know, that that kind of fine mesh that you use in 
weddings and parties and stuff like that. It's a lot cheaper than the uh, material you have to buy online um, to keep uh, flying pests out. And you can see there's currants. Um, they're waiting. Uh -huh. So here is the fun surprise that I want to show you. I'm going to take this clip off here. And we're going to shake off a little snow. Maybe a lot of snow. Pull this back. Okay, you ready for the surprise? Ta da! This is spinach that I planted or sowed in the first week of September. And they've been growing slowly all winter. Now, I planted them in the first week of September and they grew just a little bit. So here you go. This particular variety is, um, let's see, what is it? Giant Winter. I really like these guys. Uh, they produce really big leaves. Uh, they're a smooth leaf spinach, which is what I really prefer. And these guys would not survive if it weren't for um, these reinforced, um, or I should say, if it wasn't for the reinforced plastic and then these hoops. Now these hoops are secured inside the raised bed using two screws going from the inside to this wood. And that is really important. Just one screw means it just kind of pivots around in the wind and it's, it's a real pain. But like I said, these hoops stay up year round. The plastic gets changed out with other materials. Here's another example of the hoops. You can see I've got one, two, three, four, five here and you know, at first you might think, well, what a pain in the you-know-what to weed and cultivate around these hoops, but we've gotten used to it. It's pretty darn easy. So let's take a look at what's inside this one. Okay, we're kind of looking inside the, the mini hoop here, and you can see what's really cool is this uh, these shoots coming up. And this is garlic, and I planted the garlic in here about the same time uh, I added the spinach seedlings and you can see this goes all the way to the back so I'm really excited and what will happen here is I will harvest the spinach and then the garlic will keep growing and I might add oh some lettuce seedlings or mixed greens in here uh, in between the garlic as it grows and then uh, it'll get harvested in July, just depending on the variety. And speaking of varieties of garlic, now we grow the hard neck garlic here, which does a lot better, it's a lot stronger, and it stores better, um, much better than the soft neck garlic. Um, the bulbs are probably four to five times the size of what you get in the store. So that's what I prefer here. Now you might be wondering, how do you water these plants during the winter if they're all covered up like this? Well, I only water them a little bit, maybe once a month or once every six or eight weeks. And I just do that by opening up uh, the hoops, taking the plastic back while it's raining. And not for very long, I don't saturate them too much. I have learned over the years that if I do that, then the um, super saturated cells inside the plants will, will lice or burst with all that moisture. So. That's a tip, is keep them on the dry side. Okay, so let's continue on with our tour. This is the hoop house on the one side, and now we're gonna go to the greenhouse. And let's go inside and see what's going on. This is the door from the original house that we had to tear down. Fan is always running, even just slightly when I've got seedlings in here. 
You might wonder, what, seedlings? Isn't this winter time? It's true. I'll turn this off while I talk to you guys. And I do have seedlings in here. Even though it's snowy outside, it's probably 60 degrees here. And these are onion seedlings, which I think are the hardiest seedlings you can grow, the hardiest plants you can grow. And these are bulbing onions and spring or green onions. Just a little trick about growing onions. You'll notice right here, uh, it's just barely showing the root right here. See that? And that's an important thing to remember. If you want to have onions that form bulbs and don't end up looking like giant fat green onions, then it's important to keep the plant above the soil. In other words, it's important to not transplant them too deep. If you plant them too deep, then they will just form these giant fat, you know, they look like leeks. But keep them shallow. You know, onions are not really a root crop. They actually grow above the ground. So it's something I learned from an onion expert at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and I follow his tips ever since. Now here's another myth I want to share about growing seedlings. I know a lot of gardeners like to germinate their seeds on these warm mats, these seed starting mats. And for the most part, you don't need to do that. I've never used one of these mats ever in my life. Well, I take that back. I did use them to germinate some coffee beans from Costa Rica once. But um, save your money and uh, start your seeds uh, inside the house and then transplant them and put them someplace cool. Now this is a general, this is just something general. I know a lot of seeds require uh, warmth, I get it, and some need light or dark, I understand that. But for the most part, um, your cool loving plants like lettuce, broccoli, kale, um, a lot of Asian greens, they really prefer to grow in a cooler environment as soon as they germinate. So, just a thought. Okay, we're gonna turn the fan back on. It's really important to keep the air moving when you've got seedlings. So, we're leaving the, what is it? 60 degrees or so in here. Latch the door. This also helps with air circulation. So I keep this door latched, open like this all year. Boat's going out. Maybe going out to Cod. Maybe going out to a village to help a friend. Hi, you guys. Oops. Looks like these roses and so on got a little crushed with the snow falling off the greenhouse. Okay, here we go. Rhododendrons. runs. This is going to be a beautiful stand of bleeding hearts. And you'll see that a lot of the sticks or the uh, dead, dead uh, stems from last year are still left in place. And I think that's very important because inside here I know they're starting to uh, sprout. And this offers a bit of protection from wind and frost and snow. So. I'm not too anxious to um, remove those. Another thing as far as removing them, I uh, try not to pull up on the stems. I clip them back. I learned a hard lesson there. I pulled them up one time and I brought up, brought up part of the roots. These are honeyberries or honeysuckle berries. And they're starting to actually bud out and um, they'll be blooming soon. Well, there's a bloom right there. And uh, 
They produce an edible berry, very mild, like an elongated um, a blueberry. Very, very yummy. I love them. They're the first. They're the first things to bloom in the garden. Actually, they're quite pretty, really. Think about it. Okay, red currants. Everybody needs a life ring. I'm gonna go over to the compost pile and see what's going on here. You can see our setup. It's pretty simple, but it's very effective. So this is a shed, covered shed, and it protects from the strong northeasterly winds that bring driving rain. And that way I don't have to cover my compost bins per se, but I'll show you what I do do. Uh, and that is to put a piece of, this is one inch uh, foam insulation, but you can use a carpet or anything that rides down with the compost as it breaks down. So I um, did a little experiment recently where I took stalled out compost pile. It got really cold in November, so I transferred it into this bin and incorporated uh, some manure and fish bone meal and uh, food scraps and leaves. I got it started again, or so I thought. So here's what happened is I, um, it's snowing. <laughs> I put all of the, the ingredients together and then I covered it with a pink foam insulation and stuck the thermometer in there. And then for a couple weeks, not much happened. It just sort of hovered at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And that was sort of discouraging, but just the other day I took a look at it and lo and behold, it was almost 120 degrees. So I think there's there's different, different things to do, different uh, procedures to follow for winter composting. And you can hear the spruce cones hitting the roof above us. And one of those is to not turn it as often as you normally would during the summer. And I think I'll just do another video on uh, winter composting tips, but I just want to show that it is possible to do some sort of composting when it's cold. So let's take a look at what the thermometer reads right now. So that's pretty awesome. It's about 110, 112 degrees Fahrenheit. That's compost cowboy you see there. Uh, I found him face down in a, uh, a patch of seaweed that I collected on the beach. So he keeps me company. Compost Cowboy does, and um, this is my favorite thermometer. It's a real temp, it's really sturdy, and uh, it'll last for years. So anyway, I'm excited, 115 degrees. Rather than turn it every two or three days or so, um, I'm gonna just let it sit for five days at a time before I turn it. Ideally, if you wanna make, um, get finished compost in six weeks, if you mix everything right, then the temperature should reach uh, 140 to 160 degrees in four days. Yep, sure will. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I'm gonna have to scoot because the wind's picking up and uh, I need to do some snow shoveling in the front area and check the seedlings. And thanks very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.